Once again, the Lord God has been merciful and kind to allow us to be yet in the land of the living. Welcome to everyone with us this morning. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Blessings to you, your family, your loved ones, wherever you are. If you are on this YouTube channel, Church Media TT, we welcome you and we thank you for being with us. And we encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Click notification bell so that you will always be given an alert when we have new content. And of course, share with your friends, family members, etc. that there is good information here. Perhaps it will challenge you, but we want you to understand the message that will bring you out of the power of sin and give you a new life and relationship with Christ. So, happy to be with you. We're going to wrap the study up this morning with the help of God. Please bow with us for a word of prayer. Loving Father, Creator God in heaven, we approach your throne with praise and thanksgiving and humility and love, Father. We adore you. We give you praise. You are the Creator. You are the only true and living potentate. There is no one else like you, Father. For you alone are God from everlasting to everlasting. And we praise your holy name. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the message of salvation. Thank you for the hope we have in him. Thank you, Father, for making us somebody when we were nobodies and giving us a hope beyond this life and an assurance, O oh God, of your continued abiding presence with us. I ask, Father, as I stand in the shadow of the cross, please, Lord, let your words flow, that your Holy Spirit will bring conviction to the hearts of many and cause them to come to you before it is too late. We give thanks and praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so, the power and significance of the cross. Remember, it's not a piece of jewelry that you can carry or hold up to ward off evil. God is your protector. And if you put him in charge of your life, he will take care of you. There's nothing mystical and superstitious. And there's nothing magical about the old cross on which Jesus was crucified. By now that wood may have been rotten. There is nothing that we should look to in terms of trying to produce as a symbol of memory. Let the memory of the symbol be in our minds. We don't have to create an image. We don't have to make a, a cross and put a person on it being crucified to remind us. That's not what it is. God wants us to focus our hearts on him and to allow his word to govern and guide us and to give him the allegiance that is due to him. Remember, God set up a kingdom. He gave Adam control and rule, but he messed up with his wife. Satan took over, and so now God, God has to come back and do something to rectify the problem. So how he does that? Adam rebelled. Adam did not submit. Christ comes, take the form of Adam, and he submits, and he does not rebel, he humbles himself, he empties himself, takes the form of a man, and he comes in obedience to God, so that he can redefine power in the kingdom. Power is not about what you lay hold of, or what you seize, or what you grasp. God provides the power for us, when we recognize that he is the source. And that we can never rise above him. He is the ultimate power. And so now in Christ we understand that we are kingdom people. Redefined by how our Lord and Savior has redefined it. He's taught us to submit ourselves one to another. He's taught us to humble ourselves before 
him and he's taught us how we are to obey and do the will of God and given us assurance that even when we falter and we mess up he because of what Jesus did on the cross can present us before the Father as though we never sinned so the cross is the center of Scripture it's the central story of Scripture the cross of Christ is something that we need to realize that you know uh, God has given to us and shows us that power is really fine in that cross that that cross is a symbol of suffering and death and now we see the cross at the center of salvation in so much we understand that sin pulled us away from God Bible defines or describes us as enemies of God because we sign up and line up with Satan and follow in his will so we become the enemies of God in sin but in Christ Jesus removes everything that produced that enmity and now is able to resolve the conflict and bring us back to God this is what we call reconciliation it means that you had something before and you lost it and that which caused the problem has now been dealt with and the relationship has been restored reconciliation therefore has to do with relationships and therefore we might use the word figuratively to talk about something else but when we talk about reconciliation relationships come into the fray and so we talk about relationship with God relationship with each other and in Christ we are able to have relationship with God and relationship with each other and no matter what the situation we could value and appreciate how we are presented before God just as if we never sinned but now also not only do we have reconciliation in Christ we have redemption through the cross the cross produces reconciliation the cross also produces redemption remember Colossians chapter 1 uh, verses 13 and 14 Paul writes for he delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sin and he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation now how do I know we have the kingdom of God because there are those who will tell you that the kingdom of God has not yet come they will tell you we have the church which is not the kingdom but that's not true the church is the kingdom Matthew 16 verse 18 Jesus said I will build my church and I will give you the keys to the kingdom you could be talking about two different things then what the keys are for why you would build your church and then give them the keys to the kingdom I will build my apartment I will build my house and give you the key to the apartment I'm referring to my house as the apartment so here it is that we have been transferred from the power of darkness the rule of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son so we are now under the rule and reign of Christ we are in his kingdom he is our king we're not waiting for no thousand year reign that's not what the scripture teaches they take something figurative and make it literal but Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole Galatians chapter 3 verses 13 following so what are we reading in that chapter 3 of Galatians Paul is showing us that under the law you know you are under the curse because the law is always telling you hey you're guilty you've broken me you need to pay the price you are poor and wretched so scripture says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law where well, we had no chance no hope condemned all the time how did he do it he became a curse for us how does he become a curse for us by taking all the sins of the entire world upon himself and bear in mind he says it is written 
Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. So now we see redemption. And the word redemption means to buy back. It's simple. You had something, you lost it. But now, here it is, you're going to have to give something to get it back. It's like the old pawn shop concept. You pawn your jewelry, they give you some money for it. If you're going to redeem it, then you have to go and pay the price of redemption to get it back. You know, sometimes you have something on higher purchase. They come and they seize it because you're not paying. You won't have an opportunity to redeem it if you will go and pay up what is necessary in order to get it back. So here it is. We were created by God for God and to be the possession of God. But Satan came, deceived Adam and Eve, they rebelled, got drawn by the idea of power, and they sinned. And Satan snatched them, and they came under his domain and dominion. So now he is ruling over them. And he's the prince of this world system. The system in which we live, people don't understand it. We're not talking about the planet Earth. The system, the society, has rules and laws and concepts and privileges by which people live. They are what we call norms that people adhere to. They don't care whether it's right in the eyes of God or not. So people follow the fashion of the society. The society sets the trend for how we live. This new stuff come out, everybody wants to have it. So you run and you put yourself in trouble and you want to have it too because you want to keep up to date with society. A new dress wear comes out. A new fashion is designed. You want to be in the fashion too because you want to relate and identify. This is the world in which you live. But now the child of God must understand that you have been redeemed. Satan has enslaved the human race, but Christ has come to free us from that enslavement, to break the chains, to overcome the one who enslaved you, and to set you free. So redemption is told of in the scripture. And the story of redemption is actually told in three words in the scripture. When you go back to the original Greek, there are three words when put together tell the story of redemption. First of all, there's the word agorazo. The word agorazo. And the word means to buy a slave in the slave market. Now, the word has its origin in the idea that slaves were auctioned often. And when they were auctioned, people went to the slave market where the slaves who were being auctioned for sale were brought. That's the place where they were. You know, sometimes you go to an auction sale and they say the auction sale is going to take place at so-and-so place. And you go there. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20, we have an example of that where it says, For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. The word agorazo means to buy in the slave market. We are slaves to sin. The word implies that our Lord came into the slave market to pay the price for our freedom. In other words, you can't buy the slave online. You have to go into the market where the slave is to buy the slave. So when this concept is brought into the redemptive plan of God, what it is saying is God left his home in glory and took the form of a servant, of a human being, and came into the world of sinful mankind. The place where we all have been deceived, the place where we are all enslaved, he has entered into this place itself in order to take us out from this place. So that brings the next word into consideration, which is the word ex agorazo. And ex agorazo means to buy out of, as the word ex suggests. To buy a slave out of the marketplace. Never to be put up for sale anywhere else. Remember Galatians, the third chapter that we read for you a while ago? And uh, verse number 13, Galatians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So here it is. 
that Jesus came into the slave market of sin, into our world of sin, so he could now buy us out from this system. See, we are still in the planet Earth. We are still in this world, physical universe. But the system under which we were enslaved or have been enslaved, we, have now been, we are now being bought out of that system. This is a spiritual birth we are talking about. So we are bought out with the idea never to be put back there again. So the child of God, the Christian, who has been redeemed through obedience to the gospel, has been redeemed because he or she has recognized that Christ came into the realm in which we live, this society. And he paid the price so he could take us out from the system so never again for us to come back. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to destroy the system eventually. So that we would never be back into the system again. We are going to be with him in the new that he has gone to prepare for us. And finally the word lutrum. Which means money. Ransom money. Used to liberate a slave. The verb means to set free by the payment of a ransom. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 18, Peter talks about it also uh, in Titus, the second chapter. So 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18, and we're wrapping this up here now. 1 Peter 1 verse 18, here's what he says. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold, from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers. So what, what, what has happened? Christ has paid what? The ransom money. It's not silver and gold, but he has paid the ransom money, which is his blood untainted and untarnished by sin. The reason why no human being could do it is because all human blood is ta tainted and tarnished and polluted by sin and does not qualify for Jehovah God's requirement for sinlessness to be the sacrifice for sin. So here it is. Jesus comes into the slave market, into our society, pays the price, his life, his death, the shedding of his blood on the cross. That's the ransom money that he paid. In order now to take us out of the system and put us in a new system. So as Christians, we are in the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom, spiritual reboot, and we live in a world amidst the system that we once were part of. But we are now not to live according to that system. So we have to learn to be a Christian in a non-Christian environment. God has given us his rules, the book. He's given us his principles by which we should live. So when people say, let's go and do this, we say, no. God doesn't tell us to live like that. We have to abstain from the pollutions of the world through lust because he has taken that away and given us a new life. So, without the cross, there's no crown. We must follow the way of the cross. Every obstacle, every hindrance, every power, every principality, in essence, every sin and everything that went wrong with the fall of man was rectified at the cross. You know, the airline says, fly your way out. The butcher says, eat your way out. The philosopher says, think your way out. The designer says, dress your way out. The fool says, there is no way out. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Join us again next time. God bless you and keep you. Subscribe, click notification, spread the news. Have a great week. Stay safe. Until next time, I am his business. I bid you God's bless. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set me free in me So I might live